Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on vectors. And in particular, we're going to look at a connection between vectors and equation of a plane. And I'll do an example as well. Now in previous videos, I talked about the span of one vector, which is a line, and the span of two vectors, which as long as they're non-zero and non-parallel, turns out to be a plane that goes through the origin. So I'm going to build on, on that particular, uh, that, that second part a little bit more, and we're going to talk about the equation of a plane. So let me share my screen with you, and uh, we can get down to business. Okay, so the equation of a plane. Now I'm going to discuss the parametric vector form, and also say a little bit about the Cartesian form. Okay, so combining our ideas on linear combination and span of two vectors, we can now define a plane. Okay, so let V1 and V2 be two non-zero, non-parallel vectors, and let capital A be a point with position vector A, or OA. The plane that contains or passes through the point A that's parallel to V1 and V2 has the following equation. Now, let me relate this. This kind of looks quite abstract. And um, let me just relate it to things that we've already learned so far. If I cover up that and that, then we have the parametric vector form of a line. If I cover up this, then I have a plane from the last lecture that goes through the origin that is parallel to V1 and V2. And if I cover up that, this is all linear combinations of V1, the vectors V1 and V2. Okay, now this form is known as the parametric vector form of the plane P. Now here it is in set form. So it's all those points such that the point is, I guess, um, representable by the original vector plus some constant times v1 plus another constant times v2 or some scalar times v1 plus a scalar times v2 plus the vector a. Okay, let me extend that a bit more. All right, so as we saw with lines, there's also a Cartesian form of a line and we expect that there would be a Cartesian form of a plane, and here it is. This is the general n-dimensional form. Okay, but let's just break it down a little bit and talk about three dimensions for a second. Okay, so in the three-dimensional setting, this would become something like the following. It would be a1 x plus a2y plus a3z equals d. So the coefficients here, the a1s, the a2s, etc., and the d are all constants. Here I haven't written x1, x2, etc. I've just written x, y, and z. I think that's okay for three-dimensional space. Okay. So this is naturally building on our uh, previous videos on planes and also the span of two vectors. Okay, now what, a good question here might be, how can you go from this to this and back again? Well, that's the subject of this particular example. Okay, uh, and also show you some graphics associated with this to give you a bit more of a geometric feel for uh, what a plane is. Now, essentially a plane is just a two-dimensional a surface, a flat surface, sitting, at, sitting say, in three-dimensional space. Right, and I'll show you a, a picture of that in a minute. All right, so consider the Cartesian equation of the plane given by this. We're asked to determine a parametric vector form of the plane, and hence identify two non-zero and non-parallel vectors that are parallel to the plane. Okay, so how do you do it? Well, we want to go, essentially, from this form to this form in uh, R3. So what we're going to do is actually rearrange this 
a little bit and introduce some parameters. Okay, so I'm going to let my first parameter be y and my second parameter be z. Okay, thus if I isolate the x up here, so let's call this uh, say star. Star gives the following. Let's let's isolate the x. So it'll be two plus two y minus seven z, and I replace uh, y with lambda one. I'll replace z with lambda two, and now I've got basically x, y, and z all in terms of lambda ones and lambda twos. So what I'm trying to do is write these now as uh, a vector, okay? So hence, in vector form, we have the following. So let's just write x, y, and z, the position vector of the point, as a column vector. So x is this. Uh, y is this, and z is this, and that, that's pretty much all, all we need to do. But what, what is what is even better is if we can put it into this form, so three sort of vectors added together. Okay, so let's see if we can break that up a bit. So I'm looking for a constant vector. So I see there's a two, a constant two there that doesn't involve either of the lambdas. There's zero in the, 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 like the, the the second component only involves lambda one and the second component uh, third component only involves lambda two so there's no more sort of non lambda constant non lambda terms in the second and third um, uh, parts of this vector so I can take that two out a zero out from there a zero out from there and let's look at the lambda ones well the first um, element or component here has two times lambda one. The second element or component has one times lambda one, and the third element has no or zero times lambda one. So if I take that, I'll get two, one, and zero. And lastly, what about lambda two? As well, if you look up here, there's negative seven times uh, lambda two up there. There's zero times lambda two in there, and there's one times lambda two there. So let's write that as a vector. With a scalar multiple, multiple at the front. Okay. All right. So, what is our um, equation? Then I'll just squeeze this in here. It's given here. This is the this here is the parametric vector form of this plane. Okay? Now, the second part of this question asks you to identify two non-zero and non-parallel vectors that are parallel to the plane. Okay? So, if you just compare this with this, you'll see that the A vector is that, the V1 vector is that, and the V2 vector is that. And remember, V1 and V2 as long as they're non-parallel, which they are in this case, are both parallel to the plane in question. So I can just immediately pick out those two vectors and say those two vectors are the two vectors that are obviously non-zero. They're non-parallel because you can't multiply this by a number to get this or vice versa. These are the two vectors that are parallel to the plane in question. Okay, so from one, we see that two non-zero and non-parallel. Now, I don't think you need to prove that they're parallel, uh, non-parallel. You can just sort of see it. I mean, these, this zero here and this zero here kind of gives it away.
Okay, so let's just write these down. And that's it. Okay, so let's actually go and have a little bit of a picture of this and uh, get a little bit of an idea, a bit more of an idea of what uh, a plane looks like, say, in three-dimensional space. Now, you, you'll notice here that I can actually isolate the Z here. Oh, b before I get to that, though, why do they make these choices? Okay, why do they let Y equal lambda 1 and Z equal lambda 2? No real reason. Um, in fact, you could make X equal lambda 1 and Y equal lambda 2, and you, you would come up with a different but equivalent parameterization, okay? So the only reason I chose uh, this and this is because when I isolated the x, I didn't have to divide by anything. For example, if I was to isolate the z, I'd have to take these to the other side and then divide by 7, right? All right, so if I let, say, lambda 1 equal x and lambda 2 equal y, this term down here would involve some division, some ugly you know, division by uh, seven or something. So that's 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 what I've tried to avoid. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so let me now show you uh, a little bit of plotting uh, and some visuals for this plane. Now, you, in the top right-hand corner, you can see that I have isolated the Z up there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take that right-hand part just type that into Google. Now, Google has some, some pretty good um, uh, graphing techniques, uh, graphing capabilities now, just through a Google search. So I'm going to type that into Google, and we're going to see what's, what's going to come up. So let me share my screen with you again. Okay, so I'm just going to type 2 minus x plus 2y. You could put I guess you can put a, a multiplication in there if you want to. Whoops. All over 7. Okay, and watch what happens. You can see there, now, hopefully, you, that you can see the red, the green, and the blue axes. Okay, the red axis is the uh, x-axis. The green axis is the y-axis, and the blue axis is the z-axis. Okay, so you and the shaded area looks like it's the um, the x-y plane. Okay, so let me just make that a bit smaller. So if I was just to stop it there, so there's the x-axis, there's the y-axis. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll move it down like that. You can see that the, the plane here is all these colourful points, and all those all those colourful points make up the plane associated with our problem. Okay, now one of the I, I find that Google is a pretty good way to graph things now because they've got the capability and it's very easily available. Okay, you can do more sophisticated things with uh, MATLAB or Maple or something like that, but this is pretty good for for something that's that's free. Okay, so that's my presentation. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. In forthcoming videos, I'm going to continue talking about planes and doing some more examples. If you have any comments or any questions, let me know. Just put them in the comment section, and I uh, hope you can join me for the next presentation. See you all later.